All right, what's up guys? So I want to talk about some bullets here right now. Um, this is something that I think is one of the most productive lures that we could be pulling out there uh, for marlin, spearfish, tunas, mahi, you name it. But honestly, for me here in Kona and for a lot of us, we get a big percentage of our marlin bites on these bullet lures. So I know you people look at them and they're like, hey, this is a tuna lure or, you know, oh, they don't, Costa Rica, the marlin don't eat bullets or in this area, the marlin don't eat bullets. Well, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but I can only tell you that the amount of success I've had on those with marlin bites and not just in Hawaii has been pretty phenomenal. So it's kind of one of those things though that they need to be run correctly. You can't just put one out and have it um, on the wrong part of the wave or have the rigging too heavy or have the coil in the wrong spot or have um, you know the hooks are too heavy or have the wrong skirting. There's quite a lot to it. Um, but what I wanted to do was, uh, we have an absurd selection, just absolutely beautiful pieces at GZ Lures. Um, so I kind of wanted to just uh, play here a, a video I did back with, uh, it was some years ago, me and Joe, Jable's uh, Photography. We did a little segment and an episode actually with Visions of Granders on the bullets. Um, so we're gonna play that and that pretty much um, I'm gonna put that in here that pretty much is gonna is gonna cover a lot of a lot of the things that go into these bullets a lot of the rigging techniques a lot of that um, but uh, some of my personal favorites let me just before we before we cut to this clip um, the Koya 9 plus I have caught so many fish on that lure it is insane my hookup rate is not very good on it but it's also because I'm just getting so many bites on it uh, it just draws attention to it. Um, the Tantrum Large Bullet, um, the Feather Sword, the Captive Feather Sword, that lure has caught more big fish for me in the last, uh, I guess I would say two years than, than, than most of my other lures in my spread. It's just, it just singles them out sometimes. Again, maybe not the best hookup rate on that lure, but I get some really big bites on that. Um, those two have been really productive for me. Um, the Magic Malolo by Aloha Lures, um, as well, that's a great one. Um, that was really good for me this winter. Uh, the Uncle Mo by Aloha Lures. I've only really just been pulling that lure, um, but it looks phenomenal. The way it runs is basically what you dream of having a bullet run like. Um, we caught one uh, stripey on it, missed a blue on it, and uh, it looks good. So I will probably start catching a lot of fish on that one as well. But those are kind of my, my top picks right there in terms of bullets. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of bullets out there. I'm just saying what's worked for me. Um, and I know we have a, um, a big batch of all of that here at uh, GZ Tackle Co. So jump on gzlords.com, go check out some bullets, grab a couple, you gotta put them in your arsenal. And watch this clip I did with Joe a while back talking about bullets and go catch some fish. All right, thanks. All right, so since we're talking a bunch about spearfish on this episode, I thought, uh, you know, it's probably no better time than to talk about bullets and uh, how uh, productive they are for us here. I mean, mainly, you know, not only on spearfish, but on all species, so. Um, yeah, Joe, um, tell us a bit about so we got a few out here. Um, three of these got flash of boo on them. Uh, the other one's just rubber, regular rubber skirt. Got the tantrum, large tantrum bullet. Uh, Koya 9 Plus, two Koya 9 Pluses. And this Niyama Magic Aku. Been super hot lately for, for everybody here in Kona. Um, these 9 Pluses I've probably caught more Marlin. Uh, definitely had more Marlin bites on that than I would say any other lure I've fished here. Um, since I've been here in Kona, uh, but um, also spearfish um, and um, most of our ahis come off these bullets too. So we're catching pretty much everything that swims out here, eats these things. Um, you don't see them as many other places. Um, I feel like they're starting to catch on a little bit. People are starting to kind of get the idea. A lot of people pull them for tunas. Um, other places, you know, the East Coast, Australia and whatnot, but uh, they're just as good for Marlin. 
Um, you want these kind of just right on the surface. Making a little splash, uh, black water ripple, um, but um, I kind of like it when they're just disragging on top and just, just barely kind of skittering underneath the surface. Yeah, um, so the, the black water ripple we're talking about is pretty key to the success of these things. It's basically like, you've never seen it before, but if, you, if you've pulled live baits or like if you've like pulled a bait from a kite, like a live bait, like a goggle eye or something, you know you get that little kind of ripple when you have them right below the surface and they're kicking away. You know, you get that little bit of a ripple or like when you get a ballyhoo swimming really good just below the surface and you get that little like a tail swimming through the water. That's what you want in these um, most of the bullets, like, you, like Joe's saying, they all have a little bit of different action, but generally you want them doing that black water ripple, you know, maybe like a little dish rag and then back down to that black water ripple, um, which is, there's a whole thing to bullets. Like you don't just put them out there like people think, oh, they just swim, like you really got to adjust those things and hook placement, where the coil's coming out of the head. I mean, there's so much to, to just try and get them to run right. But uh, but like you're saying, like we, it's not just tunas and spearfish we catch on these things, I mean. Yeah, thing sweeps the ocean. If something's out there swimming, yeah. it's, it'll go after that. It's a good last chance thing too. Something comes up on the corner, lots of times if they miss that, they're gonna come back and, and smash that bullet on the back end. Uh, a little bit of everything on these things, yeah. so. It'd be cool to see a lot more guys trying to pull these things in different areas. I know some guys won't pull them because they think they only work on tunas or, oh, they don't work on the East Coast or they don't work in Costa Rica or whatever, but um, just get one and, and, and try it out and get it to run right um, and give it a good go, a go, good couple goes because I can guarantee you that thing's going to get smashed. Marlin, everything. You're on the East Coast, white marlin would probably love these things sailfish or eat them the smaller ones i mean yeah yeah for numbers of bites those are the ones for sure you got to pretty much fight me to get that out of the spread yeah so this one right here that tantrum either pretty one. much one thing to be noted too if you're, if you're going to use flashaboo you cannot use double hooks you're going to have a tangled mess but i wouldn't even recommend using double hooks on these things i would go a single hook far as far back in the skirt legally possible single hook up, up right because it's going to turn the way that that hook's facing and then having your coil coming up out of the head um yeah and put it out and then not just on the stinger too you could run one on the long rigger in the winter we run one on the short rigger long rigger and the stinger you know so you, any position just yeah. getting them to run right and uh certain times here you could probably run all five yeah you, yeah for sure thing. but but um spearfish candy for sure and I'm telling you, get a couple bullets and just try them out. You will be, you'll be impressed.